back to another episode of the Blue Honor Vlog. I'm Kay Williams, author of Optic Operation Deceit, the Trailokia Trilogy, and Blue Honor for which my blog and vlog is named for. That's a U.S. Civil War drama, if you're wondering, because I know that um, Blue Honor can be a bit of a contentious sounding title. <laughs> I should look around the room and try to guess where I fall on that. <laughs> if you haven't been here before, you might not know. Um, so here we find ourselves in the final month of 2024 and uh, just kind of doing like the takeaway. Um, how, um, how the end of the year has been and um, I'm going to go over one of my open book blog hop posts from uh, 2016, October 24th of 2016, which was, um, what do you want readers to take away from your work when they read it? So, um, what a year. Here we are. You know, um, pardon me. <laughs> a little sniffly. Um, I just got back from Disneyland. It was my first visit, my first visit ever to Disneyland, California. Not my first visit to Florida, uh, Disney World, which I am a veteran of. This is one of my new shirts. If you um, have been here before, then you'll notice that I usually wear a different t-shirt um, every episode that I do. So once a month, I try to have like a different shirt on. Um, Definitely t-shirt collector. <laughs> so um, the year has been phenomenal. It has also been a shit show. You know, it is what it is. And I'm really glad that I, I did Disneyland when I did it because it, it got me distracted from the election and um, in a better mind space that I think when the results came out that I did a little bit better than I expected um, in finding out that our country has chosen to become a completely fascist state. Uh, I'm unsurprised, to be honest with you. Once, once my um, initial response calmed down and everything, um, this trajectory has been coming for quite some time as a student of World War II and uh, the Nazi regime and stuff, you, all the underpinnings are there. So it is completely unsurprising that we find ourselves at this, um, at this point. And, you know, for all the performative stuff that you see from liberals, from the blue bracelets that they want to wear to tattooing pink, uh, blue hearts on their hand and different things to signal that I'm one of the good ones fat lot of good that's going to do when people start getting rounded up, uh, their rights taken away, etc. What we need you to do is actually take action. And I've advised, like on my TikTok, things that you can do actively right now, but it takes not being complacent and not um, expecting other people to rescue you. Unfortunately, there is a large swath of the country who would prefer to just call in celebrities, um, anyone else but themselves to do the labor that it takes to maintain their freedoms. So they want somebody else to come in and save them. There is no Superman, so I don't know what they're going to do. But my advice is to run for office. Um, local elections, small local elections. I'm not asking you to run for office for Congress and Senate or President. Um, small local offices Basically, that is how the fascists uh, usually take control. If you study their playbook, it, it's very easy to just go ahead and follow their playbook and use it for, for the betterment and progress of our nation instead, um, i.e. taking over local seats, protecting your local towns and counties from these individuals, changing laws and making your neighbors unsafe, etc., Another thing you can do is take jobs in emergency services, firemen, police, um, EMTs, 
uh, get seats and child protective services, et cetera. You know what is happening in these positions and you can stop the stealing of children. You can stop the abuse of police by taking over those seats and, and putting yourself in there. As long as you are a, an individual who wants to see these progress um, steps made where, you know, we're no longer saying a cab. We're we're making them responsible roles, et cetera. Well, you need responsible people in those roles if you want responsibility. We have to push out the people who have taken those positions in order to enact fascism, bullying, racism, violence, whatever it may be. So um, that's my advice to people here at the uh, close of the year is to uh, buckle in and, and start doing some actual activism. A blue bracelet or tattoo is not gonna help anyone. Um, if you see someone on the street being bullied, um, if, if that is because of the color of their skin, gender, uh, sexuality, perceived sexuality, because nobody really knows, they just assume, you have to step in. If you have somebody walk up to a woman and say, your body, my choice, don't expect her to just stand there on her own and defend herself. I watched a video not too long ago of a young black woman facing off with a red hat and him egging her on to do something. He was this far from her face and all these people kept walking by. Nobody stood up. Nobody did anything. Nobody called him in. Where was your blue bracelet then? Because I bet every one of those young ladies that walked by and, and, and the young man that I saw as well are like, no, I'm going to wear a blue bracelet and blah, blah, blah. Your action is more important. A visual cue means nothing. Nothing because you have no actions to back it up. It is, it is absolutely meaningless. I mean, when that stuff started, I was like, ugh. Here we go with the safety pin again. I wore the safety pin. I come from the rainbow crowd. Um, I believe I have said on here before that I identify as a demisexual, which is rainbow enough because a sexuality spectrum is not acceptable to the heteros and the evangelicals and the fascists. They want us to pop out as many white babies as possible. Completely unacceptable, right? My body my choice thank you very much sir um but you hear these things said or you see these things being done you say oh i'm gonna do this and nobody ever does so you know enough of the big talk let's let's see some actual action um and that ties into the takeaway from my books there's actual action in my books. These these people take actual action. Um, Joseph, for instance, in Blue Honor, comes from a highly privileged white family out of uh, Maryland. And he has gone into West Point, become a soldier, and he wants to do something about the slavery issue. He knows that it's wrong. He knows that this is unacceptable, that we're treating human beings as less than simply because of melanin, location of their birth and melanin. I'm never going to understand it. I really am not going to understand it. But anyway, before I get so mad, um, but there's things in there like Emily's privilege shows in the way that she interacts with Henrietta and, um, you know, she nursed Hetty back to health and stuff. Hetty, Hetty was rudely abused before she, she escaped um, her um, enslavers and came to that farm. And But her family actively pays her wages and makes sure that she has a savings. They're helping her to try to find her family and they're doing what they're aware of being able to do. This is 1860, a white privileged family. They're not going to be perfect. I'm not excusing them. They're not going to be perfect, but I'm going to 
want it to show all the ways that we kind of have blinders on, um, that we don't think about our privilege, that we don't think about how we're still impacting. Like Emily puts her arms around Hetty, but she touches the scars on her back where she was beaten. She has marks left. And um, Michael and Emily will both say some things, talking a good game, but they simply are too young, too blinded by their privilege, I guess, um, unaware of the things that they could actually do to affect change. You, know, you, you talk about two individuals, how much change can they truly affect? Well, within their own town, they could be outspoken. Emily is seen in public with Hetty, and there are looks, there are whispers, and Emily doesn't really do too much about it. And you might say, well, being seen in public at that time with a um, former enslaved black woman is a protest in itself. And it is, it, it is mild protest because she never speaks. She never looks at these women and says, excuse me, is there something you would like to say? You know, there's never that challenge. There, there's never that moment of maybe calling them in like, oh, good afternoon. How are you? Have you met my friend? You know, and in, including her. Emily goes to these parties. Hetty is not invited. It's all these micro things, you know, you may have heard those terms, those microaggressions. So I want people to take away maybe some examples in a way that these things form and show themselves. Um, Optic, same thing. We have all these assumptions about Karsten and what he's getting up to and what he's trying to do. And um, there was one thing a reviewer took back um, on Optic. It was um, her putting on lipstick all the time and not understanding what lipstick meant in World War II and what a protest that was to put on red lipstick and the power dynamic that that, that was a display of for women. So that was a huge thing for American women was to put on that victory red lipstick and be like, yeah. <laughs> to to all of that fascism and i think we should do that again i'm, I'm seeing women call for that again I, I think we definitely should do that on femme presenting people even cis men you could do that um i guess but the red lipstick really meant something so for claire to use that and to hang on to that it was a symbol of feminine power so there's a lot of easter eggs in these books and if you will scratch that surface and get in there you'll find a lot of things trilokia you know three books loaded with mythology and um ideologies turned on their ear all sorts of things um angels and demons for instance and they're not thought of in the traditional uh, manner but also in the traditional manner it's like nah, 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 nah. um because that that world is what's real so that world that the duta which are the angel race come from which is called zion which was picked because it was the best sounding name and the pantheons for this heaven realm and i was like i liked it it sounds very very trippy spacey it was not chosen for for zionism and i sit here sometimes wondering if i i need to update my books but then i'm like going it isn't zion's fault that zionists exist is it um and uh, likewise, I go back and forth with the uh, Fenrir penannular. That's the pin that they wear because um, when I initially designed it, I wanted the Star of David on there. Um, very, very strong Star of David symbol because they are Fenrir and that represents wolves and strength and loyalty and that 
willingness to fight sometimes i wonder too you got to be careful with the colors um there are some things that i have come across since creating it that the colors can be problematic etc but you know in thinking about that too the books are supposed to echo they're the reality we are not so we have taken and appropriated all that is theirs and installed it here from these broken memories. So the symbolism isn't the same. It isn't the same. So that star isn't Jewishness there. It's a completely different thing, but it exists and is a strong symbol for the Duta. Um, and, and like the Duta themselves, they became within um, many religions, angels, and then the ones, of course, who fell became demons. And that whole story and stuff left an imprint on souls' brains that they remembered it when they came here, even though they don't remember much of anything. So um, I guess um, with that one, it's thinking about appropriation um, and, and how that manifests itself. Uh, thinking about mythologies and how much we stick to them and how much we get like, you know, really bogged down in ideologies with that. Um, there's a part in Shadow Soul where Mile challenges the friars and their, their ideology around Catholicism and their beliefs and the Bible itself. And she's like, we did not send that to you. That is your book. That is a man-made written book. That is not from us. And you abuse it. And, I mean, if that's true, think about that in the sense of if that were true, if, if the angel sat there and said, look, we, we never wanted that book. We never had you write it. We did not dictate it to you. I don't know who you got it from who these people were but it wasn't us um and maybe it was the other guys who knows um that's a scary thing to think about because if you think about like in this election how propaganda and misinformation is pumped into societies to make them think certain things to control them to get them riled up against each other to get things um where they can control different uh groups by controlling, you know, by making this group think that they're dominant over that group, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's stuff like that in there. And to challenge these ideas that if, if angels are real, they're trans-dimensional beings. That, that would be a truth. They would be trans-dimensional beings. And they exist in a universe of their own with a society of their own, with rules and regulations of their own, and do we really have any idea what that is, what the expectations for us are, and why do we keep coming here in the Buddhist thought of reincarnation, the Hindu and Buddhist thought of reincarnation over and over again, we keep coming here and we're not learning the lessons. So we're not getting it right. Or it just takes that long to have all of these massive experiences, etc. I, I, I don't want to go back, to be honest, because this is, this is suffering, you know, as um, Buddhists will tell you, this is suffering and it is hard. I, I don't want to do it again, you know. Um, I want to get it right, you know, and there's that thought, how do we even get it right? Is it possible to get it right? Isn't it endless? Isn't it endless? I don't know. So, um, you know, the takeaway from this is, is to really dig down and think how you can be better, how you can think from different lenses, you know, within these stories. It, it's going to make you, give you, offer you various lenses um, by which to view the world and think about things historically, currently, etc. Um, but you know, like uh, Trilokia too, uh, the mythologies and stuff and how they all fit together and that we can fit together 
humanity, every single aspect of us, we can all fit together peaceably. We can. And no one is better than the next person. We are equal and wonderful and amazing, an amazing species. And each of us deserves the respect and dignity. Each of us. Um, I do not understand um, white supremacists or, or any of those people mocking women, um, mocking people of color, mocking black people, Native American, any of it. I don't understand where you come from. Why are you not curious about other cultures and learning things and filling your mind with the beauty that is this world. You just want to paint it with a white paintbrush and erase even our own cultures. Even our own European cultures have been erased and thrown over for this ideology of whiteness. And I don't want that. Be I want back whatever, you know, my Irish and Swedish ancestors had. Um, I had a Dutch grandfather, great grandfather. I had an Italian great grandfather. O amazing cultures. And we know so very little about them here in America. <laughs> you know, the Netherlands knows themselves. But it's like we don't even ask. We just trip over and go, and they have all these comments, and I'm just like, you know, constantly like face palm, face palm. There's so much richness out there. Like, I am so thrilled and excited that I will be able to study Chinese history. I'm like, that's huge on my list. I would like, um, and if you have suggestions for great books to read on Chinese history, I, I'm talking from the start, the start, like up to the 1800s. Um, get me started with the, the very beginning, pre-wall. China um, and, and then coming up through there. I would love that, please. Um, I think it's very important to learn about a culture before you maybe study the language because I think it helps gives you some context and understanding of the people because once you understand the people and the context and the culture and stuff, I think that helps you learn the language a little bit more. Like I noticed learning German got a lot easier when I learned a lot more about Germany. So, um, so these are the takeaways. Um, put your lenses on, use different lenses. Do not accept inequality. Fascism is bullshit. Okay. Um, my body, my choice. Y you don't want to run that line out there because we can take your choices away too. Dead serious. This is going to be okay. Take my advice on the activities. We've got this. And we will get through the next four years. Seek those offices and those positions that can help protect you and your neighbors. And I will see you back here next time. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you. <laughs>